Oh, God, look at that. Tonight. Oh, thank you, Lord. All right. So you want to be a prospector. <laughs> Don't change careers just yet. Whoa. There are many things to take into consideration. If I ain't bleeding, I ain't digging. <laughs> Got quite a gash there. What's it? How do you handle life-threatening situations on a daily basis? Danger everywhere. It's the nature of the game. Any issues with working with lightning, tornadoes, or monsoons? All right, guys, let's get under. Yeah, come on. Or when confronted by thieves. My tools are gone. Damn it. How's it feel not being able to find your own stones? You have to wait for me to find a pocket so you can take my stones. Still think you're ready? Dude, I think I've popped one of my shoulder bones out. If so, it all might be worth it. I think the value on this thing could go as high as a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. I would put wow. a value on this specimen in the range of 750000 to a million dollars for that specimen. Damn! Damn. They're Rocky Mountain treasure hunters. It's Jimmy. Looking to strike it rich. Yes! <laughs> but the quest for gems comes at a cost. Weather, rock slides, and greed make this a deadly gamble. Can't cover! They are the extreme fortune seekers known as prospectors. I think you're looking up more in the quarter million dollar range. Holy cow! People who dream of one day becoming a prospector usually have these images in mind. Travis, Travis! Oh! Oh, oh. oh my God! Hey, Dad, you want to see something pretty badass? That is cool. Oh, cool. Look at here. Look at this. Damn. That's it. Bam. Bam. yeah. But getting to BAM is a treacherous journey. The cliff wall is just about to give. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. If you see those rocks move, don't even ask me. You jerk me the hell out of here. Danger everywhere. It's the nature of the game. Whoa! Aqua surprise. It's just too damn hard to get. Nothing is ever totally 100% safe. We work in a very dangerous job, and we have to keep that at the height of our attention every day. Amanda and Travis had many a close call while digging for Aquamarine at their last laugh claim on Mount Antero. Working up there is a nightmare. I won't lie. What was that? Yeah, Tommy knockers are one thing to hear when you're inside a mine shaft that's already uh, supported, but I don't like to hear them out here on the surface. That's not good. Tommy knockers are the noises, clicks, pops, and little movements in a cave that you can hear. That's the mountain's way of yelling at you, get out of here. The mountain might have told her to go, but the aquas were begging her to stay. OK, mountain, behave for me. It's dangerous, but I'm too tempted. OK, I saw uh, a little bit move up here. Ah. And right there, and right there. I just heard it, too. Yeah, let's get the heck out of there. Experience told me it was time to quit if I wanted to keep my hands attached to my body. <laughs> let's get the heck out of here. Most prospectors would agree that safety should always come first. But leaving a pocket filled with valuable gems, even at the risk of life or death, isn't always easy. There's the best one right here. Like oh, that. that's really nice. I like that. After a long and heartbreaking season, Tim finally found a rich pocket of Amazonite on their last day at their Smoky Hawk claim. Oh, that's the sweet that's, piece. That's fuel pocket stuff right there. That's, that's the good. best of the best. You can give me another dozen of those. Just as Tim got into the pocket, heavy rains quickly turned the dig site into a death trap. Watch your head. What the f hell? One of the scarier moments was when the high wall starts falling down on us, and I think we had like three or four near misses. This is dumb as hell. Absolutely dumb as hell. Tim refused to walk away. Stop it. Tim. Seriously, stop it. Damn rocks are falling from above, and we're going to get smashed in the head. I'm an athlete. I've had 
my fair share of concussions over the years. I think I'm up to four or five now. So my sister gets a little concerned whenever, you know, rocks over my head because he's afraid. Tim's already had enough concussions. Can never stop. I think the last one that was really close to his head finally convinced him. All right, we got to quit. Tim never wants to stop. When we're on a pocket, he wants to keep going. And so in this case, uh, it was one of those where in another second, I would have been hauling him out of there, but he finally backed out. Time to go, time to wrap it up, time to leave. Let's get the machine out of here and let's head home. The Bussy family faced a similar situation at their thank you Lord claim on Mount Antero. Hopefully it will produce something here. With the season winding down and tensions running high, Brian refused to quit digging for Aquamarine, despite pleas from his family. There's quite a bit of stuff up there above you, honey. I just seen some of that stuff move, so just be careful. I'm watching Brian dig, and I'm getting a little concerned because I see those big rocks up on top. And it's really challenging for Brian to take it easy. Even the crew worried for Brian's safety. One of the tough things about this job is watching people get into situations where they're potentially in danger. You always know that the miners are experienced and you want to trust their judgment. But if you see their head under a pile of loose rocks that you think is going to fall, it's hard not to say anything. Moments later, the hillside collapsed and Brian's temper flared. You just need to let me watch the bank and do what I do. Don't come up and say, oh, this is gonna fall. That's gonna you fall. It was gonna fall. I'm just saying that I was nervous Please. about that up there. I understand, but I'm nervous if about I didn't, everything. If you had that big one there, I wouldn't worry. Just be careful. Let me do what I do, please. It's really hard to capture the danger and the pitch of a mountain on camera. If they are to go, all the rocks above him are going to go. If that rock slide had happened, it could have killed him. If it's too dangerous to come up in here, then everybody needs to stay away. I already f everything up. I might as well really f it up. Well, I scare people when I start knocking rock down, and sometimes instead of sitting below it or waiting for it to fall, you just got to get right amongst it and knock it down. At the end of the day, I learned, you just have to trust the miners. They know what they're doing. Falling off a mountain doesn't necessarily mean on foot. Mount Antero's infamous switchback known as Dead Man's Curve is every prospector's nightmare. Dead Man's Curve is an area that actually has had the most amount of cars go off of it. It's pretty, pretty treacherous. I mean, it's very narrow. You got to respect that road. There's nothing that's going to stop you if you go off of that road. I think every mountain has its dead man curve, but Mount Antero has the dead man's curve. It's why it's got its name. For Brian Bussey and the Prospector's TV crew, the danger of dead man's curve became all too real this season. We were shooting a scene on Mount Antero. As a camera crew, we were trying to stay ahead of Brian Bussey, and I was pushing the pace probably a little bit faster than we normally would coming down the mountain. I was coming around Dead Man's Curve, and somehow the wheels locked up. I must have hit a rock and started skidding and essentially lost control of the Jeep. It scared me when I saw the Jeep tipped on the road. You guys stay put down there. And I did what I could to calm everybody down and try to get everyone back in a safe position. Put it in reverse. I'm so glad the driver chose not to go forward. That would have been bad for everybody involved. Come on back. You're, it's coming up, brother. Come on. Keep coming, brother. That was probably the most dangerous situation I've ever been in. Keep coming. You're, you're all right. Keep coming. Now hold, hold tight right there. You're good to go. Words of wisdom to any prospector starting out, please never, never, never go alone. You're going to fall. You need somebody. Amanda had to learn this the hard way. I laid there on my back in June on Antero, back in 2003 or so. Just laid there crying. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I don't have any. I was alone. I thought I was going to die. Never go digging alone. Danger comes in many forms when mining in the Colorado Rockies. It's one of the only places on Earth that can experience all four seasons in just three months. 
We do get some really crazy weather out here. You just never know. One second, it could be stunning. I love it when they get all the way up here and it's just nothing but the peaks sticking through. It makes the hike worth it. I enjoy watching them. It's different up here than anywhere I've ever been. The next second, it could be dumping. Hailing, raining, snowing. This place is cold and brutal. Man, Mom, it's starting to come down hard. Man, I've never seen a year like this. Oh, the weather. I mean, you got everything. You got sunshine, snow. You got to dress for, like, four seasons. Unfortunately for Rich, the weather was terrible on every trip he took this season. This is our third day of downright yuckiness. It's just cloudy again, raining again. Seems like we're not even getting a break. We're ready to roll. Ready to start our interview, ready to start filming and... There was a lot of times during the day we just had to hide in the caveman condo, get out of that rain for a while. Hey, Rich. Yeah. The coffee water's about ready. Oh, sounds great. Want I'm ready coffee? for a cup. I'm ready. You know, this was the rainiest uh, season I've seen in a long time. Weather this season has been especially wretched. I really believed because of the weather we were going to die a few times this year. Amanda and Travis, along with the Doris family, survived one of the worst storms to hit the Rockies in decades. I, think I heard a rumble of thunder. It's looking pretty dark up there. Yeah, it'd be best to go seek shelter here. Amanda and Travis knew to seek shelter from the quickly approaching storm. They just had no idea how bad it was going to be. It's time to make preparations for a, a bad storm. The key things are get in your tent, get off the ground, and hope for the best. That's all you can do up here. I didn't have a second to lose. We had to go throw up our camp as quick as we could. The storm came in so fast, the production crew was caught completely off guard. When that terrible storm hit, it was too quick for even them to get away. They got trapped in the storm, and we did too. All right, guys, let's get under. We had crew members balled up in a ball underneath of some of the rock overhangs, just shaking. Sam, come on! They got to know what it was like to live my life, and I don't know if they liked that or not. <laughs> what no one knew at the time was that they were getting hit by a very unusual, very dangerous storm system. We have at least four tornadoes that have been reported thus far. One earlier today in Lake George. Just miles from where Amanda, Travis, and the crew were camping, tornadoes touched down. One hit the Doris's Laramie Cowboy claim. Wow, Dad, look at this. This is so weird. I just can't believe a tornado actually hit here. That's just, this nuts. Tornado in the mountains is a pretty rare sight. I've been out here over 30 years, and I've never seen one. You can see that that's down, and that's down. I know, you can like see down. its path. That's the crazy thing, it's like so distinctive. The next day after the tornado touched down, the weather was still dangerous. We were shooting a scene to show the aftermath of the tornado that had gone through the Laramie Cowboy, and the drone was right above my head. And so I'm walking, trying to talk to my dad, and all of a sudden this crack of lightning was just like right in front of me. That definitely raised the hairs on my neck. Later in the season up on Mount Antero, Craig Cardwell and the crew also had a hair-raising experience with lightning. We're getting pelted by ice. All right, Dad, you go over there and start battening down the hatches. We'll finish up here. Okay. All right. Oh, my God, it's getting cold. As the crew set up for one last interview, they were unnerved by what was happening to Craig. Uh, your hair's sticking straight that's up. Crazy. Is it really? Yeah. When your hair's standing up and lightning's popping around, that's going to be one of my uh, uh, most memorable moments up here of all the times I've came up here uh, watching my family run from me. Uh, I'm starting to buzz, man. Everybody back up. I might blow. Uh, when I start getting uh, electrified, you, you, you know, you literally hear a buzz, and you don't notice that your hair standing up to someone points at you and starts running from you. Holy cow, baby. We out of here? Oh, my God. Okay. Come on. Let's go.
anyone in the crew can call a dangerous situation such as lightning. I think we, we have a tendency to push it to the end. It's hard to stay enthusiastic when the weather has shut you down. In August, everyone was shut down for the season on Antero when winter made its way in. The wind is pretty cold. Looks like I'm snow. Grab my... It is snow. Here it comes. Great. There's nothing that can be done when Mother Nature decides you've earned all you're going to for the year. Snow's coming in. The end of the season. The end of the season, man. We made it through another one. But uh, when it starts snowing up here, I ain't ready to do battle with uh, Mother Nature. No, dude, it's over. Yeah. The season ended today. Uh, the ice ran us off, and uh, season's over. I advise people to have the fear of God in them before they go up the mountain. After 15 years of going up, I've damn near joined every religion known to man at one time or another. Dwayne coined that phrase. Damn this pain train. Yeah, but when we pull into the station, it's gonna be a great day. To live the life of a prospector means living a life with pain. If I ain't bleeding, I ain't digging. <laughs> you have to have a pretty high pain tolerance to do this job. Very. Roll, you bastard. Roll. Roll, roll. Yes. Yeah, all right. Oh. Oh. Show me your battle wounds here. I've got scars up and down both legs from rocks that have landed on me in the past. In hell or high water, it's coming out of there. There it goes. In their search for Aquamarine, the bussies had to move a lot of boulders. We're up against that rock again. One, two, three. There you go. Roll. Yeah. Oh. Just as they rolled the last boulder down the mountain, Brian injured his shoulder. Did I think I popped one of my shoulder bones out? Why don't you come down here and take a look? Oh, man. He suffered a serious shoulder injury, one that almost took him out for the season. I think when I hurt my shoulder, I still had an, you know, a rush of energy from, from moving the rock. It hurts everywhere. I was very concerned at that point whether I would be able to finish the year. Oh, I can't lift it up very high. All it takes is one bad injury and a prospector's career can be over not only for the season, but for life. I don't like the feel of that bone right there. There's two of them that are out of place. When Yolanda popped it back into place, it kind of, it almost made me pass out. I took it as easy as I could, and I got through the year, and we had a successful season, so I feel very blessed for that. Yeah, it's not as easy as it was when I was 30. Dwayne, Ronnie, and Homer also had to move a lot of big rocks. What are you grabbing me for? I got nothing else. Okay. Dwayne uses a strap to get it done. Okay, get. But it comes with its own set of problems. Go, Homer! I'm going. Once you move that rock and it starts going down the hill, you have to have it rigged just right so your rope's going to pop off of that rock. Or it's just going to snap, and then you got a cable like a bullwhip going around all over the place. Go. Man versus rock. I didn't realize we was going to be into moving as many rocks to find something as small as the aqua and all that. Ronnie learned the hard way that moving giant boulders is a dangerous activity. Ronnie. Yeah. While mining at the Blue Rose, two rocks rolled down from above. And I seen these two rocks coming down, and I missed one. But the second rock caught me right on the side of the head. I was leaning up against the rock, kind of rubbing it. You got quite the gash, my friend. You do have quite the yeah. gash. It was just one of them weird things about it here. You always got to be alert watching above you for the rocks. And it just caught me off guard, and luckily that was it. He's got a quite a gash there. The rock that hit Ronnie, if it had been any bigger, it could have been disastrous. And it hit him kind of a glancing blow on the side. If the sharp edge of the rock had hit him, it could have been really bad. The next day, Ronnie returned and didn't appear to lose any strength. 
The bar broke. Usually, if Ronnie gets mad enough, something breaks. Steel broke. I had never seen one break like that, and I've been around a lot of crowbars. <laughs> well, Ronnie's hit definitely harder than the granite, because the rock broke in about three, four pieces when it hit him, you know. Fortunately, what they found at the end of the day made it all worth it. Oh, look at that. God, I never... We have stayed after it and stayed after it, and now it's starting to pay off a little bit. The Cave of the Crystals in Nica, Mexico, contains some of the largest and most beautiful crystals ever discovered. How old are the crystals suggested to be? Is it 20,000 years old, 1 million years old, or 600,000 years old? The answer when we return. The Cave of the Crystals in Nica, Mexico, contains some of the largest and most beautiful crystals ever discovered, some as large as 40 feet. How old are the crystals suggested to be? The answer, 600,000 years old. Initially, uranium-thorium dating by professors at the University of Bergen in Norway and the Nica Project suggested the largest crystals date back 600,000 years. Fellas, welcome to my world. This is it. Yeah, here we go. Point of no return is gone now. Every claim has its own level of difficulty, but the undisputed king of pain for the prospector's crew is the hike up Mount White. Of all the miners' claims, uh, Dwayne's claim up on Mount White is truly the most difficult of them all. This is one of the most challenging shows I've ever worked on, purely because of the danger factor. I'm getting too old for this Let's Take a break, man. Let's take a break. Oh. oh, mother. Getting up to the camp at Mount White is a serious trek. Everyone on the crew of prospectors must be in top shape. OK, so we probably just hiked about 1,200 vertical feet. That seems like it's a lot further. Yeah, pretty rough. The film crew took a beating this year. In addition to the hike, they have to haul all of the equipment and document everything as they go along. It's tough enough when you're just hiking around or climbing around an area like that, but one of my eyes is always in the viewfinder, and then I have to kind of keep an eye on things. That scene was shot with both B camera, A camera, with Dwayne morning scene. Dwayne's fast today. We're a little slow. Watching the whole crew slowly make their way up here. As first-time miners new to Colorado, Homer and Ronnie had to learn about the pain train the hard way. I cursed Dwayne several times on the first hike up, especially on the when we got to the big rocks and the slides, and it was rough. Something tells me you guys are going to hold this against me for a while. You know, he don't always tell you how hard something is, just like the hike up here. All right, man, let's get up there and get this done. Come on. OK, just hang on, Grasshopper. We're going. You're too much energy, son. I need some. Yeah. That was pretty treacherous. That's, that's about the most extreme physical hiking I've ever done. We started out in the Three Musketeers. Hopefully, we don't end up Curly, Larry, and Mo. Ha! <laughs> Dwayneisms. Dwayneisms. Bam. Got another bam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them. yippee ki -yay on that. I do have two power tools up here. One of them is called Homer, and the other one is called Ronnie. My favorite Dwayneism is, I'm getting too old for this shit. I'm getting too old for this shit. Homer, did I ever tell you I'm getting too old for this shit? Yesterday, and the day before yesterday, and the day before that. Baby bar the door. Here's some Leverite. 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 What is Leverite? Leverite where it is. It ain't worth a damn. I think if this is my last year on the mountain, this would be a fine way to go out. As a miner, not only do you have to be prepared for weather, danger, and pain. Here you go, roll. Popped one of my shoulder bones out. You also have to be ready to deal with claim jumpers. Claim jumpers. Claim jumpers. Claim jumpers. The scum of the earth. Almost all the miners fell victim to claim jumpers last summer. Now, oh, what the hell? My tools are gone. 
damn it! Well, the claim jumping rat bastards are just too ornery to file their own claim, I guess. Amanda's last laugh claim was particularly vulnerable after she and Travis were snowed out the year prior. Yeah, oh there we go. That's big money. Since the show aired, it's public knowledge that there's Grey Dock Marine up there. There's a lot of greedy people up there. Every minute that we're not up there mining increases our chances of getting robbed. The thieves were especially vengeful this season, as if stealing wasn't enough. Get the gate. Oh, jeez. Claim jumpers are complete Did someone jack up the gate? They had to have. Look at this. It's like twisted. On the first day of mining season, the bussies arrived to find their camp destroyed. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? This is not done by the weather or the animals. This is done by vandals. Look at the cots. The cots are slit. It's hard because it seems like people are just stealing boot off your plate. When they damage your, your goods, your sleeping bags, your tents and stuff. You know, then you got to turn around and, and just go out and buy more. And, and it, it makes it very difficult for us. This, this is really crazy. Can't believe anybody do this to us. This is thousands of dollars out of our pocket. As we have shared our lives with the Prospector Show, of course with that brings the attention, the good and the bad attention. Everyone knows where we're at and where to find us and knows what they can do if we're not there. Claim jumpers were especially a problem for Amanda and Travis over the summer. Oh my gosh. Yep. Oh my gosh. They spray painted all this orange. They took our poles down, threw them down the hill. We've had some great doors open for us, some good opportunities because of the TV show. However, there's been a lot of claim jumpers. They've been a problem for everybody this year. Since the show aired, there's been a whole new crop of claim jumpers. It's hard to tell who exactly did this. He vandalized this whole thing and he stole all of our tools. Piece of Things got intense when a stranger appeared and watched Amanda and Travis through binoculars. Oh, wow. I think we got company. Not the good kind either. What's he doing? Shoot. That's definitely not a hiker. There are eyes everywhere these days. You don't just peer at me through binoculars like a coward. You come up and introduce yourself like you got some sense. Oh, gosh. Sure enough, it looks like he's waiting for us to leave so we can maybe come up here and dig our next pocket for us. How's it feel not being able to find your own stones? You have to wait for me to find a pocket so you can take my stones. When working in remote locations far from help, miners have to be ready at all times to protect themselves. I just hope that nobody ever crosses that line and puts her in danger. You know, I'll do whatever it takes to keep her safe. Very, very protective of my wife. I ain't liking something. What is it? Something ain't right at all. Not at all. Even an eight-hour hike to the top of a mountain didn't protect Dwayne from greedy claim jumpers. Maybe people don't realize, but this is a federal mining claim. Anything you mess with up here that has to do with mining is a federal crime. Oh, what the hell? The claim jumper made off with over $1,000 in equipment. Damn it. Tired. That's a long trip. I'm too tired for this This is not what I would, just last 100 feet up. It would just, man, just make it to the hole. Oh boy, oh boy. Not today. The claim jumper was also brazen enough to leave a sign for Dwayne. This right here is greed. Somebody was hoping to hit a pocket without me being here, but that was personal. Most of the times, if somebody's just going to claim jump you, they're going to get in the hole, dig like crazy, and get out before they get caught. They're not going to take the time to do some little petty vandalism, so that kind of makes me think maybe this is personal, you know? I'm not looking for trouble up here. And I'm the kind of guy that'll walk away from a fight, if possible. My damn claim marker, and I'm doing it my damn way. Every miner has their own theory of how to deal with claim jumpers. I wouldn't threaten nobody. No, 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 that's not nice. Not nice at all. I want it where I want it, not where some claim jumping rat bastard wants it.
It's the only way to take away the pain. Oh, man. Oh, oh my goodness. Damn it, man. This season's amazing finds. That's aqua, boy. Fifteen years I've been looking for this rock. And the biggest appraisals ever. This is even beyond my imagination. It's yeah. unbelievable. This must be a North American record. There's only one good reason prospectors put it all on the line and risk their lives. Oh! Thank you, Lord! All right! Bam! Bam. To hit the jackpot. Oh, 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 whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. I see something. Hold on. Patience is important in mining. This is something that takes years, sometimes decades, to achieve. Oh, God, look at that. Bam! Oh, my God. Look at this. Oh, wow. Man, that is pure Jimmy, too. Near the end of the season, Dwayne had an incredibly lucky day. Awesome. Dude, that's $2,000 worth of Austin right there. Easy. Just minutes into digging, he and his apprentice Larry found a large Jemmy aquamarine. Yeah, I can that's barely awesome. contain myself. People dig their whole lives and don't find nothing like that. I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. I'm moving too much. Don't drop it. it wasn't much longer until he found another large piece. Oh, man. Oh, oh my goodness. Damn it, man! This is gonna be a good week. It ain't even lunch on a Monday and it's been a good week. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life right now. But that wasn't it for the day. Holy <laughs> man. There it is. Oh, wow. Dwayne scored the final piece of the puzzle. I've never seen an aqua go together like that. For a great big gimme aqua, three different pieces out of three different places in the hole. It's just uncanny. It was the fastest Dwayne ever unearthed such a large treasure. Look at that. What are the odds of that? Odds were also on Dwayne's side when he found his most special specimen of the year. One that rendered him speechless. You could see in his expression that it was something really big to him that he's never seen in his whole 15 years coming up here, you know, mining. What is it? Got, what do you got? What in the world? Oh, Check look that. Here. Look at here. Look at this. That, that's Aqua Boy. Hey. The Royal was named after a special friend Dwayne made from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh, I found a good one. I think that's going to be a good one. <laughs> Bam! I promised him I would find something spectacular and name it after him. So here it is, Royal. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Woo! Pulling out Royal was probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience. There's not that many Royals. I've only found one in 15 years. Hey, you may have it in <laughs> 15 years I've been looking for this rock. If this is the only rock you found in the whole season, you've had a great season. Also having a phenomenal season was Rich Fredard. Look at the color of that. Rose-colored. Look at that. This is nuts. After pulling out a mother load of topaz last season. That's a four pound topaz. Holy cow. And the largest faceted topaz ever found in North America. This must be a North American record. I think the value on this thing could go as high as a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Rich didn't know what to expect. He surely didn't see this coming. Look at the size of that topaz. Wow. That's well over a pound. <laughs> We're in the money, honey. <laughs> I just feel really gifted. I feel... makes it feel special. Just when it looked like he reached the end of the pocket, Mother Nature had more in store. Oh, shoot, Gene. You ain't gonna believe it. What? I got a big topaz in here. Here's just a Wait. piece of it that just came off. Wait a minute. Come here. Come down here. I'm gonna need yeah. your help. Holy cow, Rich. No. Gene, look. And even more. We are in a zone. <laughs> Oh, you gotta look at what I'm working on. Is it even bigger? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. It's just that great thrill, you know, and it's just 
it's nothing like it. You're pulling something out there. No one else has got that touch. It's millions of years old. Oh, that's a topaz the size of some of the quartz you've been pulling out. How oh, big? Where do you think that weighs? About a pound? I, yeah, at least. <laughs> oh, that thing's freaking huge, ain't it? Rich had the best season of all. While everything has not been appraised, with his record-breaking topaz from last season, his gem show appraisals hit a remarkable three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. The largest discovery and appraisal on prospectors, however, came from the Doris family. This is even beyond my imagination. That's Good. unbelievable. Congratulations. As far as importance on this specimen, there's nothing else like it in the world. And all the museums and all the collections in all the world, it's completely unique. There's nothing else like this thing. Joe worked all his life for a specimen this extraordinary. I would put wow. a value on this specimen in the range of... Seven hundred and fifty thousand to a million dollars. Holy that cow! <laughs> That's pretty good. You really can't describe how that feels. I mean, maybe you know, finding lost treasure. It's like hitting the jackpot. I'm thrilled. Uh, what a great number to hear. That's something I dreamed of, but never expected to hear. Ho always hoped I would. Joe is now in discussions with a museum interested in purchasing the piece. We've actually got the Denver Natural History Museum. Uh, considering it, they came down and looked at it, and they're going to float a proposal. So, got our fingers crossed. For a family, it's an awesome legacy to leave behind. It, it really puts an exclamation point next to our name, which is very good. What was Amanda's favorite find this year? Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And later. you got to remember, this is a reality show. Bye-bye. Vehicles. I hate those things. While Amanda had an amazing season at the last laugh. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It was the smoky quartz she and Travis found at the rise above that was her favorite. Woo! Oh wow, that's see through. Yes, that's what we need you to be, see through. I think some of the best finds of this season were those hematite coated, beautiful honey colored smoky quartz. Those things were phenomenal. Okay, okay. There he goes. There he is. Triples. Oh, triplet. Oh, oh I wasn't nice. expecting that. It's a quadruple. Oh, my god. This termination, that termination, that one, and that one. That's incredible. That is incredible. Look at that. Yay. Their smoky court specimens were a popular item at the Denver Gem Show. I sold a couple of them already, and it's been great. The feedback from the customers, they're thrilled. Oh, they're clean, clean, clean. Each one of those things started at a minimum of 400. Topaz and quartz out of the same pocket. We're loving this. <laughs> it's a good day to dig. The Cardwells also found the spectacular smoky quartz pocket on their last day on Mount Antero. Oh, there's Smokies. Smokies are just falling out. Just like Rich's pocket, the gems never seem to stop appearing. We actually hit the bottom of a vertical pocket. And we call them chimneys because as you go in, they go straight up. How exciting is that, baby? I know. Huh? That one's a pretty one. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. It's kind of a rush. <laughs> oh, my God. Mother Nature does wonderful things. This is a family moment, you know. I wanted my dad to see it, you know. I think uh, an honor our dad would call this the Grady Pocket. The Grady Pocket it is. That'd be right. a great honor. Dad, we hit the big one. <laughs> really miss him. Mining is a difficult, yet rewarding life as it is. Adding the extra element of television production takes it to a whole new level. The limelight was never, ever my thing. I was always meant to be a rock hermit. It's brought a lot of attention. Can't even go pump gas anymore without somebody saying, you're that rock lady, and aren't you on that rock show? <laughs> One of the biggest pluses about being on the show is the reaction I've got from little kids. Can I get a bam? Bam! <laughs> They think I'm a movie star, 
I'm still just plain old D. But if it's a little kid like that, I let them think they're standing by a movie star if they want to. Hey, can we take a half a second? Absolutely. First few autographs, I thought some of my friends had put them up to it, you know. Uh, uh, you're more than welcome. So I just came out of Mark's to look, have him oppressed. Uh, Bye bye. I just came out of the. T Will you look at me when I'm talking? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hope Matt has good news for us. We're really worried about him. Every time a UFO flies into the picture, we really don't like that. Yeah, you got to remember, this is a reality show. We're always moving. We're doing things. So here we go. I'm going to take a sip. And and working in the wilderness comes with its own challenges. The shakers always, because it's so wet, so for us it's difficult. Oh, Freaking little bird. Anybody have a slingshot? We got into... Can we just yeah. throw some of this thing? All the nature, please be quiet. Go look for another big pocket. Hi. <laughs> Basically tripping up the vehicles. I hate those things. You can go through and... Oh, <laughs> sorry, bees, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, all the distractions fade away when that amazing gem comes into view. When we pull out a big specimen and we know it's something special, your heart's racing, you can't hardly breathe, you're so excited. Finding that special gem makes all the pain, struggles, and challenges worth it. If I'm going to put my blood, sweat, and tears into it, I want the prize. Oh, wow, look at that. It's not just about the treasure or the money that that treasure might bring. It's the fun of the hunt. Those are things I've always loved, and I can't imagine ever not enjoying doing those things. This is more about the thrill of the hunt. Only an idiot would do it just for the money. If it's not inside you, then you don't need to do it. Oh, they're clean, clean, clean. We're happy, we're humbled. We just can't, can't be thankful enough for such a good season.